If you go to the Indiana countryside on a clear night, away from the bright lights of the city, you'll see a sky filled with billions of stars and galaxies. You can't help but wonder, out of all these points of light, is there a place out there other than our own planet where life exists? Can we truly be the only place in the universe where civilizations have risen and fallen with advanced technologies developing over time. Maybe someone is out there, like us, thinking the exact same thing. It's a question pondered practically since the beginning of time. Ancient religions speak of gods that brought advanced technologies to earth, enabling simple people to do very complex things. We have ancient artifacts in museums that hint at our very origins, though much is dismissed as pagan mythology and nothing more. Maybe life on Earth really is special and unique in the universe and occurs nowhere else. It could be that our own government made up everything about unidentified flying objects and aliens to distract us from other important things. Are UFOs the creation of military scientists or a technology we could not have developed on our own and came from somewhere else? People see unusual lights that move across the sky faster than any known aircraft and move in ways that are beyond comprehension. And yet, if it's the creation of our military, why are none of our military aircraft built the same way? And what about the many strange tales of encounters with beings that are not human? Is it all just an elaborate deception? If so, what's the reason or reasons behind it? Today, the United States government openly admits unexplained aerial sightings and has agencies to investigate. And yet, many of these sightings happen near our military bases, strangely, very often. It would be less unsettling if these things happen somewhere else very far away, seen by people we don't know. But some of these unusual lights and strange encounters have been seen right here in Indiana by our neighbors and family members. This is an in-depth study of Indiana's unexplained lights in the sky and other unworldly phenomena. It was the 1950s, and a couple were coming home from a night out. They were traveling through Monroe County, Indiana, enjoying conversation as countryside passed on each side of the car. But this particular night would be like no other. Without warning, the headlights and radio stopped working, and the motor died. The car rolled to a complete stop in the silence of the woods. In the faint moonlight, the couple could see two figures crossing the road in front of them. Both figures were wearing what looked like silver spacesuits, and this reflected the moonlight overhead. Soon after the two figures cleared the road and disappeared into the woods, the car headlights, radio, and engine all started working again, as if nothing had happened. It's unclear what the couple saw under the veil of moonlight, but they were very shaken by the experience. They chose to tell only a handful of people at the risk of being called crazy, but they knew what they saw. They were not the first to have an encounter, nor would they be the last. In fact, these kind of experiences have been recorded since antiquity. The ancient Sumerian 
Assyrian, Babylonian, and Akkadian people have stories of extraterrestrial travelers, gods that came from a planet far away and gave knowledge to humans. They called them the Anunnaki. In popular culture, many books and documentaries have analyzed these ancient claims. Hindu holy stories also tell of travelers from another world, bringing knowledge to mankind, including advanced mathematics. In the book of Ezekiel, even the Jewish Torah and Christian Bible describe what sounds like an alien spacecraft. In the ancient book of Enoch, Sons of God are said to come to earth, bringing both advanced knowledge and taking the daughters of men for wives. In Peru, ancient people carve gigantic pictures in the desert that can only be seen from satellites or aircraft. Known as the Nazca Lines, these figures take up 19 square miles with the best visibility above 1,600 feet. This raises a lot of questions. Without aircraft, who could see these in antiquity? How would they keep their lines straight? Or the bigger question, who were they for? In other words, who were the builders trying to impress? This particular figure looks like someone in a spacesuit. Combined with the inability to see these drawings at low altitude, it's created a theory of ancient visitors from other planets. The Mayans created petroglyphs that seem to show people traveling in the cockpit of a spacecraft. Notice what looks like an oxygen hose. While ancient astronauts sound like a far-fetched story, many say that explains the gigantic structures that were built in antiquity, structures so advanced that we cannot replicate them today with modern technology. Archaeologists have uncovered papyrus showing that ancient Egyptians understood multiplication, geometry, fractions, algebra, and even quadratic equations. They had a firm understanding of astronomy and lined up these huge structures to constellations. How could ancient people, once only hunter-gatherers, make such a huge leap in technology unless they had outside help? Closer to home at Anderson, Indiana, we see earthworks that align to the stars and seasons. They predict solstices and equinoxes, for both summer and winter. These earthworks track the distant star Fomalhaut, a star you cannot see without a telescope. While it could be elegantly simple technology behind all of these projects that we don't yet understand, the question remains. How could these ancient, simple people accomplish such complicated things? The deeper archaeologists dig, the more puzzles they uncover, such as at Gobekli Tepe, an astronomical structure found in Turkey. While radiocarbon dating does have its share of flaws and skeptics, this structure allegedly using stars to predict the seasons, has been dated to around 10,000 years old. Previous archaeological studies have painted early humans as too simple and primitive to do anything but survive, let alone possess advanced knowledge of mathematics and astronomy. Native Americans have stories of a creator that came down from the sky and gave wisdom to early man, 
You see these stories in petroglyphs. They tell these stories in oral traditions and dance to this very day. These stories are echoed all across the world. Medieval illustrations show odd things in the sky shining brightly and floating like a giant airship. Christopher Columbus, when sailing to the Americas, reported strange bright lights that came from the sky and went into the ocean. The overwhelming evidence is that extraterrestrial sightings and speculations are nothing new. And one year at a family reunion, I heard an old UFO story told by my own relatives. For many decades, my family reunion has been held at Wilson Park in Bedford, Indiana. Each year, the place is packed with good food and great people, catching up with one another and telling stories. In 2002, my elderly cousins, Burl and Reba, were telling me about the good old days. At one point in the conversation, Reba said, did you tell him the story about the UFO? And the day took an unexpected turn. One night in the 1920s, their dad was driving the family home in their Model T Ford. As they traveled down the road, a bright light started following the car, appearing from nowhere, but staying on one side of the fence. The car would speed up, the light would speed up, the car would slow down, and so would the light that followed them. The light was absolutely silent in a very eerie way, and the whole family was terrified. Finally, when their father turned the car right, the light continued on its way. They had no explanation of what it was. When the reunion concluded, I took Burl for a ride in the country to show me where it happened and tell me what he could remember. Okay, we're out in the country with Burl. Oh well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, about around here. Yeah, there wasn't no house here. Anyway, around about here, as you said, the, along in here someplace, it started to, the ball of lightning or... Yeah. Or or whatever it was, and it when the car would stop, it would stop too. Oh yeah, yeah. Now where was it? Right behind the car, or side oh, of the car? Oh, side the fence. On the other side of the fence. Yeah. And it would follow you beside the fence here. Yeah. And then it would go over in the road. And it'd come in the road, Tommy time, time. No, no. It just bounced along our fence road. Uh, bounce on top of the fence. Yeah, about no, oh, about. I, of course, I don't do it now. Was it a steel fence, or can you remember? Oh, no, it's just a wire fence. Okay. Like this here, man. Okay. This is stay on that side of the road. Okay. So, anyway, it went down the road and went in. It get... come in next turn. Okay. And it was straight ahead, and we turned right. We turned left. But it never crossed the road? No. Uh, it just no. went along the fence here? Yeah. I don't know what the name of this road is exactly. No, I don't remember what it is. But you want to turn left here, I think. Okay, so when your dad got up to this place here, you guys... It, it, it was straight on we turned. You turned left and then went on down yeah, the road, whatever right, it was. Turned right. Now, when it, was there a fence there when it went across? Well, I don't remember. But it stayed on one side of the fence anyway? Yeah. Yeah, huh. it never did go over the fence. That's interesting. Okay, you know what this road through here is called? Oh, I think it's a groundhog road. Groundhog road? I believe that's what it is. <laughs> if I'm right, that's what it's called. 
Okay. Let's see what they got on here. Oh, well, it says it on the. It says on the thing there. It says, Round Hog Road, Bedford, Indiana. Well, I was right, wasn't you I? You were right. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. This comes in to help, Bill. All right. The next year, cousin Burl passed away, and after that, his sister Reba. If I'd missed that family reunion, I would have missed the mysterious, unsolved UFO story from the 1920s. But since then, people have told me similar stories, told to them by their grandparents. Quite frankly, southern Indiana has been a weird place for a very long time. And weird things keep happening. In September of 2008, just outside the Bedford city limits, something very unusual appeared in a farmer's field. Twelve large circles formed on the ground, perfectly flattening the farmer's crop with an otherworldly pattern. The biggest of these circles was the size of a football field. If this was an elaborate hoax, it would have taken an immense number of volunteers to create it in just one night. And being close to a major road, all of this activity would have been seen. Southwest of Bedford at Huntingburg, another crop circle was found. Appearing overnight in a wheat field, this one was a massive 150 feet in diameter. That's the size of a 15-story building, if laid on its side. While often dismissed as a natural phenomenon or outright hoax, some of these crop circles are quite complex and many times have set off Geiger counters with higher than normal radioactivity. The question is, if these are neither natural or a hoax, what are they? Are these UFO landing sites or a message we just don't understand? Similar sightings were recorded in the 1600s. People of the time thought they were made by the devil or his minions as they could offer no other explanation. Today in Indiana, centuries later, we're not much closer to a conclusion, nor is the rest of the world. But there are definite clues to consider. Go anywhere in southern Indiana and ask someone what they think of UFOs. Everyone has an opinion, ranging from fake news, the supernatural, real aliens, military technology, to all of the above. Some of that train of thought and what's happening in Indiana today started in the 1940s during World War II. As pilots flew extensive bombing and reconnaissance missions, they saw unidentified flying objects in the sky. These craft navigated like nothing they'd seen before. They would fly beside their aircraft or chase them and vanish at will. It was a very spooky thing. Donald J. Myers, a radar operator, saw them on his screen and called them Foo Fighters and the name stuck. The Allies were convinced it was a Nazi aircraft one far advanced from anything they had. It was a valid concern. Germany had developed the V-2 rocket, unmanned weapons that could deploy from far away and hit targets in London. In fact, Nazi scientists sent the first rocket into space over a decade before NASA was established. They developed the first jet engine fighter, one that could fly circles around allied planes with propellers. They created Delta Wing aircraft, similar to our later stealth planes, and had designed something that looked very UFO-like, 
According to declassified documents, Adolf Hitler himself believed this weapon could win the war. However, after Germany's defeat in 1945, this weapon was never found. Declassified US intelligence says the weapon was never produced, but some are not so convinced. After World War II, America offered amnesty to these Nazi scientists in exchange for their aerospace knowledge. If America could develop advanced jet fighters, intercontinental ballistic missiles, and other high-end weapons of war, it would greatly enhance national security. It was a necessary evil. Werner von Braun was one of those Nazi scientists. He was key in developing America's space program. These former Nazis propelled America well ahead of the Russians in both military aircraft and the space race. But some speculate that was only half of the story. To test these high-end rocket and propulsion systems, Top secret test facilities were established. Some were built on existing military sites. Some were brand new, but all in remote places, far from the public eye. It was a matter of national security. But just two years after these Nazi scientists were brought to America, a major event near one of these bases would change the world. In fact, it would change the landscape of southern Indiana forever. In 1947, there was a crash near the Roswell Army Airfield in New Mexico. The wreckage was retrieved by Army personnel. It was reported as a flying saucer. That report was quickly retracted. A new story was provided saying it was instead a downed weather balloon. But non-military witnesses that had seen it go down said it was traveling at incredible speed, maybe 400 to 500 miles an hour. While that estimate was from civilians and prone to error, it was certainly faster than any known weather balloon ever built. Mr. and Mrs. Dan Wilmot two highly respected citizens, said it looked like two kitchen saucers put together, approximately 15 to 20 feet in diameter and glowing in the center. It made little to no noise before the crash. The Army denied Mr. and Mrs. Wilmot's account. But just two months later, the United States Air Force was created, and security increased exponentially. In a report declassified in 1994, it said the wreckage was a top secret surveillance balloon under Project Mogul. But the large majority of people do not believe this report. In Indiana, many people believe we have our own Area 51, or rather, Area 51s. Secret weapons testing has been underway since the 1940s at various remote military installations across southern Indiana. And if you live near one, you likely have a story or two. This is where it gets interesting. For many decades, the Jefferson Proving Grounds near Madison, Indiana has been shrouded in mystery. Though the base has been shut down since 1995, there are many rumors of what used to go on here, from sniper training to advanced weapon systems. Even today, some areas are completely off limits, with official reasons ranging from chemical contamination to outright radioactivity. It's said that military ammunition made of depleted uranium has contaminated large sections of the base. 
This cannot be verified, nor if it was instead exotic technology testing, and some things don't add up. The base had its own airstrip and tested weapons systems for 54 years, from 1941 to 1995. And yet, there's this strange spot in the woods, not far from the proving grounds. In the middle of the woods, it looks like a place to land an aircraft, but not any that require a long runway. There are no roads or trails that go to it, begging the question, what was its purpose? Was it for helicopters or other systems that land vertically and without roads? Is there an underground facility that we don't know about? The biggest military secret in Indiana is no secret at all. It's the Naval Surface Warfare Center at Crane, Indiana, simply known locally as Crane. In operation since 1941, this massive facility takes up 98 square miles and is easily seen from satellites. It's so large that it even has its own railway system. Classified weapon systems are developed and tested in this quiet corner of Indiana. Over the years, many people have reported UFOs and other strange activity around the perimeter of Crane. Both Bedford and Huntingburg are only three minutes away by military jet. There's been speculation that the crop circles are somehow associated with Crane due to proximity, but there is no conclusive proof. But Camp Atterbury near Edinburgh is a totally different story. Built in 1941, it's well known as a pre-deployment and training center, but also as a hotbed for UFO sightings. In fact, they've become so routine in and around Camp Atterbury that they're ordinary to local people. Everyone has seen one. Add dark helicopters flying across the installation and it's a place many describe as Indiana's Area 51. One summer, a few miles from the base, I saw these strange lights in the sky firsthand. I was on a country road east of Camp Atterbury. About a mile along the journey, I saw something strange on the right side of the road and stopped the car. Levitating above a field as if in a military formation, I saw numerous green lights. They made no sound, could levitate indefinitely, navigate any angle, and moved at incredible speeds. Before I could take it all in, they started to peel off the formation and headed back toward Camp Atterbury. I got back in the car and chased them, getting up to about 90 miles an hour before they completely left me. And when I say left me, I mean it was instantaneous. They were half a mile ahead, then suddenly gone in an eye blink. And these sightings around Camp Atterbury continue to happen. As I process the things I've learned and have seen with my own eyes, I still have many questions, much like other sane people. Let's start with the obvious. Do I think the United States has its own UFOs that are actually known advanced military aircraft? Based on history, I know that many military aircraft were completely secret for many decades. Such as the SR-71 Blackbird. It flew so fast that missiles weren't able to catch it. Due to advanced satellites, it's now obsolete. A variety of high-end stealth technologies have been developed for military aircraft. These create a radar signature no bigger than a bird. I used to be a military aerospace contractor and have seen a few things in my lifetime. Whatever I have 
are most assuredly not the latest version. I never had that kind of clearance, nor do most people. But based upon some of the downright spooky, almost magic technology that we have today, where did it come from? We can trace many high-end technologies back to Nazi scientists. But were they simply evil geniuses? Or did they get these ideas from somewhere else? The German military sent expeditions across the world to find any ancient esoteric sources of knowledge. People have long suspected that they found ancient texts leading to scientific breakthroughs. Or maybe they found an alien spacecraft well before the Roswell incident and thereby gleaned otherworldly knowledge. The declassified documents have uncovered that German pilots also saw these lights in the sky. In this world, there are many people smarter than I, and although these advanced technologies are very confusing to me, and I can't see how anyone could create them without alien intelligence, it doesn't mean they couldn't. But what about tales of aliens and alien abductions in modern history? I believe there's people who tell stories to make money. And others that were genuinely terrified by something they didn't understand. There are many theories about these encounters. These range from genuine visits from another planet, demonic entities, to a government hoax. And there have been plenty of books, documentaries, and podcasts for anyone that likes going down that rabbit hole. The problem is, absolutely no one has physical evidence to back anything up. No one has pieces of a UFO or the body of an alien, just stories and pictures that are easily faked. Just maybe, it's part of a big spy game to convince people that aliens exist. And if enemies think you have an alien technology, one that they don't, it's a pretty great deterrent. But without a doubt, people are seeing things, recording them with smartphones, and are posting videos to the internet. Whether it's aliens or advanced military aircraft, the situation is no longer contained and can no longer be denied. The Freedom of Information Act has released many once classified documents detailing past UFO studies. Though it's safe to say, we have a truth, but only the truth we're allowed to have. Videos have been released by the military. They now call UFOs Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, or UAPs. I believe the footage is genuine, but whether it's alien or someone fooling someone else is anyone's guess. Congress has opened hearings about these unknown lights in the skies. After all, if these incredibly fast aircraft that can appear and disappear at will aren't ours, it really is a matter of national security, especially if that technology is operated by our enemies. It's interesting to note that just months after the Roswell incident in 1947, the Air Force was created. And now, during this new phase of transparency, the Space Force has been created. Is it to fight threats from enemy satellites and hypersonic missiles? Or a threat that's coming from a lot further away? There are new government agencies, such as the AARO, All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, that was created in 2022. Or rather, it was admitted that we had it in 2022. 
but history tells us that you and I are not told the complete story. It took decades for Project Sign, Project Grudge, and Project Blue Book to see the light of day. And with artificial intelligence, able to create believable images and video, we face a future in which it will be impossible to sort fact from fiction, especially if powerful agencies devote all of their time to deception as we know they do. What is truth? The real one, without filters. Some religious people will tell you that all of this is no mystery, but a great delusion. One that's been prophesized for centuries. All the strange lights in the sky, stories of abductions and crop circles, manufactured to confuse and deceive people, such that they abandon their faith. And the intensity is now escalating to prepare people for the final lie. For example, if tomorrow you were told that the Earth was one big experiment created by aliens and not by the God you worshipped all your life, would you believe it? Would you hold on to the faith that you've been taught since childhood? Or would you believe what's right in front of you with convincing images on television, internet, and even in person? That day of reckoning for all of us may be closer than we know. The question is, what do you believe?